Let's look at the, uh, the the year in federal politics and for the nation. Who who would you say were the winners and the losers of 2023, Peter McGowan? You, you, you'd have to say the, the, the incumbent government is the loser. At the beginning of the year, it seemed to be in an impregnable uh, political position. Um, it's lost three state premiers since then. Um, say what you like about... Palaszczuk and Daniel Andrews and Mark McGowan. The fact is they were titans in their own territory and they've all been uh, replaced by lacklustre uh, successors with the possible exception of Cook in WA who seems to have a deft hand in, for politics. Um, and then you had the voice referendum. But even before the defeat of the voice referendum, and we spoke about it often on, on, on our regular uh, appearances, there was a decline in support because of the cost of living issues. It's not terminal. Um, and as we discussed last week, it could be midterm blues. But there's some worrying signs for the government. It's going to be much harder now for Prime Minister Albanese to make up for lost ground. He does not seem connected with the electorate, which is genuinely suffering a cost of living crisis. So that's the, the, the loser. Uh, Simon Banks, who would you have in that category for the year? Look, undoubtedly, I think the Yes campaign was the biggest loser of the year. I think they were warned plenty of times in the lead-up to the campaign that they really needed to get their act together to coordinate a positive campaign and to give Australians a really positive and constructive reason to vote Yes. Ultimately, they didn't achieve that. I think, uh, you know, whilst I was obviously a supporter of it, uh, very disappointed by the result, I don't think you can look past Senator Nampajira Price. I think she marked herself out as a, a very effective campaigner on those issues. Uh, admittedly, she's largely gone missing in action since the referendum and there really hasn't been any follow-through by the Coalition on the really bread-and-butter issues that need to be solved in Indigenous communities that uh, that the referendum highlighted, if you like. Uh, I think that's going to be a challenge. The current government is getting on, probably in a quieter way than it had intended to, uh, addressing those concerns. But that issue has largely fallen off the political uh, radar. So I think, you know, they're the kind of the biggest sort of winners and losers. But when I think around, you know, who are the people who have sort of done their job and who I think the Australian people might have noticed in some unusual ways, I'm going to pick one a little bit out of... Um, a, a bit out of the, out of the usual... I think uh, when you have a look at the Senate, you look at David Pocock. I mean, yes, admittedly, he's got a balance of power role in the Senate, but he's actually stepped up and I think in a very thoughtful way exercised that power. He's been very uh, circumspect about the issues that he's chosen to do it on. He's been very deliberate about mm -hmm. the way that he's done it. He hasn't overreached in terms of his demands from government. Uh, I think he's been a very astute political operator. And, look, I mean, uh, most of Australia won't get to vote for him at the next election. He's a Canberra politician, as you know. Uh, the people of the ACT really do appreciate him. But I think if you ask middle Australia, uh, you've got this senator making these decisions, what do you think of his performance? I think most people would say, well, that guy seems pretty reasonable and pretty fair-minded. Peter McGoran, where to for 2024 then? What's your, what's your prediction for the new year? I think Peter Dutton has been the biggest individual winner of the of the year, especially given his earlier uh, polling position. He hasn't solved the Liberal Party's problems by a long shot, Kieran. They're just too profound. They're structural, they're financial, uh, they're personality-based and so on, but he's managing them, and that's the first step to, to getting the right people in the right state divisions and recruiting the right candidates. Um, next year, it's going to be the economy. Uh, there are obviously volatile, unpredictable world conflicts, both in the Middle East and in the Ukraine. And there's the American election, which is just going to, apart from its entertainment value, puerile as it might be, it, it is a fundamental economic and strategic importance to Australia. So I think next year is going to be as as full on and and challenging as this year in both economically and politically. Peter, I look forward to your contributions throughout the the, uh, the new year. Merry Christmas to you and Simon. Same to you. Merry Christmas, and we look forward to reconvening in January, gents. Thanks. Merry Christmas, both.